Yeah, well, so I was in Syria in October with a colleague, a journalist from Germany. We were visiting uh, the Kurdish fighters that fight against ISIS. But there was also a very small group of Arab fighters of the Free Syrian Army that have joined forces with the Kurds because they were forced out by ISIS from their cities. One of them is Abu Isa, who is from, originally from Raqqa, a farmer from Raqqa, who was forced out by the Islamic State when they took Raqqa from the other rebel groups. And after that, he started cooperating uh, with the Kurds against ISIS. So I really was very eager to meet one of the Arabs to have a different kind of story uh, from Syria. Uh, so we were at the base in Ain al Isa, uh, which is about 30 to 40 miles from Raqqa, the capital of the Islamic State in Syria. Um, and my colleague, the German journalist, didn't believe it was the front line. And he had an argument with our fixer. He was angry at the fixer, said, we should bring us to the front line because what you're showing now us is not the front line. Because a lot of front lines, when you go there, there's absolutely nothing going on. You don't hear any gunshots. You don't hear anything. People are drinking tea. They're waiting. Because most of the war is basically just waiting for a fight to start. If one side attacks or the other side attacks. So most of the time they're just doing nothing, the fighters, and they're just waiting for someone to attack. So we first went to a school where there were young uh, female fighters and they were trying to convince him to join the, the Kurds to fight against ISIS. And he almost didn't have any arguments because they were saying, uh, he was saying, I'm too old. They said, no, that's fine. We have a 70 year old fighter with us and he's fighting against ISIS. He said, I don't have any experience. Then the young fighter said, we also don't have any experience, so that's no problem. And then he said, well, I'd rather have it with the German army. He said, there's no problem, you can join us. So he had almost no excuses. So first, female fighters tried to convince him to join the YPG. That didn't work. And then afterwards, he went to, um, he basically went to, with him, to another checkpoint of the Arab fighters, uh, which were, was a little bit further. And then he still didn't believe that was the last, the last line with ISIS. So there was a motorcycle and an FSA, local FSA commander of the Free Syrian Army. And he said, okay, just come on my motorcycle. So he went on the motorcycle and he drove and he drove and he thought there was going to be a new line with, with FSA fighters, but it was not coming. So he asked the, the, the local checkpoint commander, uh, where was the front line? He said, no, no. He said, Dash is there. Jishul Hood is behind us and then he said now we drink coffee in this house and then he said no 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 no. we have to go back go back go back go back so they went back and he was kind of nervous after that because he saw how close they are and there were also civilians coming from Raqqa um, to the to the point because there were still civilians going from Tel Abiyad a city on the Turkish border going towards Raqqa for medical service because they still had at that time a sort of good medical service for Arab civilians and by, um, they were they had to pay the doctors, but they were still going to ISIS hospitals because they didn't have a hospital in their own town. Uh, and then at that point, they said, I wanted to really talk to the commander of the Arab rebels in, uh, in that area. But for that, they were saying that we had to wait for uh, Abu Dash to come. And Dash in Arabic is almost the same as IS. Uh, Dash, that means the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And IS means Islamic State, so it's the same. And the guy's name was Abu Dash. So my German journalist friend, he got very nervous because he was coming. And he said, I don't want to stay here. If you want to wait for him, I'm going to leave. So at the point we were waiting, it was 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So finally he came, but we already drove away. And we saw him on the way. And then Abu Dash, he had like a dishdasha and he had sunglasses. And he said to us, sorry, I cannot do an interview and I cannot connect you to Abu, Abu Isa, the commander of the Arab rebels, but I can give you his number. And then later after that, we were just making jokes about Abu Dash all the time because he looked very funny and he has a dishdasha and he has like very hair, sloppy hair. And he apparently is a, a former presidential candidate and was in prison for almost two years for challenging Assad. Uh, moreover, he was one of the last survivors of a rebel group called Afad al-Rusul. He survived like a suicide bombing in, in which almost all of the commanders in Raqqa were killed by ISIS. And now he is with the FSA in, uh, around Tel Abiyat and Ain al-Isa, around 30 kilometers on the front line from ISIS. But it's so very strange that his name is Abu Dash and he also has apparently a 
a degree in a university, I think economics or something. So it was a very strange to see a guy called Abu Dash because it almost sounds like ISIS. And that was the, one of the reasons why the German, German journalist who was with me was a little bit uh, paranoid that he was maybe ISIS or that something could happen because ISIS was so close and civilians were still passing through.